you know, we hear a lot of stories about immigration out there, and every so often it's nice to hear from an individual who actually did come here the right way from another country. Ana Puig is one of those people. She was born and raised in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and she moved here to the United States with her family at age 14, and Ana would like to talk to you right now. Ana Puig! It's such an honor and pleasure to be here today sharing with you some of my own life experiences and how it relates to what's happening in America today. I'm an American by choice and today I give thanks to this great country for all the undiscriminating opportunities it has given me throughout my 20 plus years here. Unlike our president, I'm not here to apologize to Amer for America. Quite the contrary. I'm so proud to have fought to become an American citizen. I was born and raised in Brazil and came to this country in 1986 at the age of 14 years old to live with my uncle at West Point. My life in America couldn't have started in a better and more American place than the home of the long gray line. The home of heroes and true believers in duty, honor, country. I met my husband, a young cadet then, son of Cuban immigrants, refugees of the horrors of the bloody Che Guevara and Castro communist regime. Two years later, I joined my parents and brother in California. Our family came here legally to be part of the American dream, and that's life, liberty, opportunity, and the pursuit of happiness. I did not come here to take advantage of the system or to change the system. I came here to be a part of this great system. And through tough times, hard work, and without any government handouts, we made it. And I feel like my family and I, we have lived the American dream. And we want to keep this dream alive for our children and grandchildren. During the campaign last year, just like Joe the Plumber and so many of you out there, I decided to stop sipping my latte and screaming my TV. I decided that as a devout American citizen who has had the opportunity and misfortune to live outside American borders, that it was my duty to get off my couch and fight for freedoms that our founding fathers put in place for us and which are currently being hijacked by the current administration and Congress. we must do in order to avoid the traps laid down by the enemies of our uniquely American way of life. Our economic health and high unemployment rate have been and will continue to be important issues of concerns to all of us. If you think the economy is in trouble now, you ain't seen nothing yet. President Obama and the Democrat-controlled Congress are quickly destroying the economy of our nation with bailouts, stimulus bills, cap and trade, endless deficit spending, and now the takeover of our health care system, approved by no other than Fidel Castro, a communist himself. Don't be mistaken, the Chinese are paying close attention to what's happening in America. They are hedging against the obvious weakness they see in American economy and the dollar. If the media would do its job, this would not go unnoticed. aside for a moment, let's take a, take a step back and also understand that we're suffering a national moral identity crisis in America today, identical to the revolution that my home country suffered. It came about through a well-planned Marxist program that took control of education, media communication, entertainment, and religion over the course of two generations. These days, I find myself astonished as I realize that there's a direct correlation between what is happening in the United States and what happened in Brazil and most of the rest of Latin America. I make no apologies. What's happening in America today is Marxism through and through. And I like to call it 21st century Marxism a camouflage statement for communism because people get all weary when I say the word communism. So let's camouflage it since we're not fighting a bloody battle. Instead, we're fighting an ideological one. So the model for implementation of 21st century Marxism is quite simple. First and foremost, the press is used to create economic instability. 
Then, a progressive candidate is introduced to the masses as the Messiah, who is going to regulate the evil capitalist system and fix all societal problems. This candidate has a political platform with plenty of social changes that will fix the inequality between those who work hard and pay their taxes, like you and I, and those who have nothing because of the rich, to each according to their needs, from those according to their means. Everyone will be more equal and feel better about themselves. This Messiah is adored by the media and the entertainment industry who unthinkingly and blindly preach his social programs to the masses. The election process itself is corrupted by voter fraud and intimidation. What do we see with ACORN here in 2008? Yeah. Upon taking office, social programs are immediately implemented, benefiting those who help get him elected to the detriment of the tax-paying class that bears the bills and struggles to keep its standards of living. Look at the sweet deal that UAW got with General, General Motors. What we fail to realize at this point is that the campaign is not over. And that's the point that we're at today in America. An extremely clever and massive psychological campaign of self-exposure is needed in order to demonize any and all possible political opposition. The same media machine and available during the election now provides unaccountable hours of prime time TV and printed media space assuring the necessary, necessary exposure. Our tax dollars, along with presidential status, will allow him to crisscross the world and the nation so that he can continue to market his cult of personality. Just this week, we saw him bowing to the Chinese, Chinese communists, and hugging the Brazilian Marxist. At the same time, the image of a messiah is branded into the minds of our children at our schools, or showing worship from future generations. The false image of a universally approved dear leader is created, making the opposition voices sound completely out of context. A majority controlled legislative, legislative body passes necessary constitutional changes needed to increase the number of terms as well as minimize the possibility of the buildup of a strong opposition. These laws are then rubber stamped by a judiciary loyal to the party in power. The democratic way to keep the Messiah and his Marxist agenda in power is now accomplished. However, if their agenda creates a socioeconomic environment bad enough even to their own believers, opposition will try to democratically reverse the situation by defeating the Messiah and or his designated successors. That is when the Marxists in power unilaterally call for the end of democracy and announce the start of a new era for the people. And that's exactly what has happened in Venezuela and so many other countries throughout Latin America. And it's starting to sound very familiar here as well. It should sound familiar to all of you. So, even though many Americans would not know this, since political events in Latin America barely make it into the news here, even though it's in our own backyard, folks, we are on the same political path that 21st century Marxists in Latin America have used to democratically elect presidents such as Chavez in Venezuela, Lula in Brazil, Morales in Bolivia, Correa in Ecuador, Kirchner in Argentina, Ortega in Nicaragua, and many, many, many others. The list is so long. What we are witnessing in America today is a duplication of what has happened in Latin America. The same tactics are being used here. Infiltration of the education system, implementation of class warfare ideology, voter fraud, brainwashing through mass communication, and hollow promises to the lower economic class that will never be implemented due to the real and hidden agenda of these politicians.